Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror drama film, Bones and All. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with shots of some amateur paintings, and then we see Marin and her friend gang together to play the piano. The friend asks Marin if she wants to come over to her place for a sleepover, but Marin is hesitant. She motivates her to make new friends, so Marin decides to consider her offer. Now Marin goes to her single dad, who offers her to drive the car back home. She does well, and then they go home, where her dad watches the news and falls asleep on the couch. Marin senses an opportunity and tells her dad goodnight, after which she sneaks out of the house through her window. Marin eventually manages to find her friend's house, and she introduces herself to all of her friend's friends. Now, Marin enjoys a normal sleepover with the girls, and everything seems to be going fine. However, she suddenly bites off one of the girl's fingers, and it makes the others scream in their chicken voices. Marin is dragged away, and the girls tend to Marin's victim. Marin realizes she's messed up, so she comes back home to her dad, who panics when he sees what she's done. Dad seems to be aware that Marin is a cannibal girl, so he takes her away to a new location. However, he can't take care of her anymore, so he leaves Marin alone after she turns 18. Among the things that her dad leaves behind are Marin's birth certificate, some cash, and a tape with a recording of his voice that tells Marin everything dad knows about her, right from her birth. Marin starts crying at first, but then she decides to move to Minnesota, where her mom is believed to be residing. Marin gets herself a ticket to Minnesota and resumes her dad's tape. She learns that her first cannibal incident was back when she was only three years old and killed her own babysitter. Dad's voice explains how brutal the scene was, as Marin had ripped off her babysitter's face. This was the reason why he had never used his family's last name since that time. At night, Marin reads a book all alone, but then it starts to rain, and suddenly, a mysterious oldie shows up with his dying muscles. Marin doesn't recognize him, but then, oldie reveals he's a cannibal just like her, and he is able to smell her and her cannibal hormones, even from a long distance. Oldie states that he can also smell how long it's been since Marin last ate human flesh, so he offers to fix her up some dinner. Marin is a little nervous at first, but Oldie reassures her that he won't eat a fellow cannibal. Later, Oldie takes Marin to a house, where he fixes up some chickens for her and explains how cannibals can be harmful even to other cannibals. Marin starts to explore the place and asks if there's someone else over here. Oldie tells her to use her, her smelling powers to figure out if there's another person, and slowly, Marin can identify upstairs the smell of something special, but definitely not the poops. She walks up to one of the rooms and finds an elderly woman dying on the floor. Marin panics and says that she cannot kill innocent people, but Oldie tells her that he found this elderly woman in her dying condition. Oldie reasons that cannibals like him and Marin need to feed their appetite, so she will have to just accept these terms on her own. Marin needs some time to collect herself, and then she goes for a nap. After the nap, Marin wakes up to the sounds of munching and finds Oldie feasting on the elderly woman like a wild animal. Marin joins in, and then she has a chat with Oldie about cannibalism. He shows off the gigantic braid of hair he keeps to mark the people he's eaten throughout his life. Oldie also reveals that the first person he ate was his own grandfather. Marin starts to trust Oldie and reveals that she's looking for her mom. Now, Oldie suggests cleaning up the blood on their bodies, and then he dries off next to Marin. However, Marin thinks that Oldie is a creep and she needs to escape. Marin runs away from Oldie and gets into a bus. She resumes the tape and learns that she had also killed a young boy at camp when she was eight. Her dad's voice says that he never loved her like a father should, but he never hated her either. Now Marin goes shopping and finds a thin boy named Lee next to her. A man harasses a lady at the store, but Lee stands up to him and provokes him by flexing his skinny muscles. The man chases Lee outside the store, but it turns out that Lee is also a cannibal and he eats the smelly man. Marin could smell Lee when they met at the store, so she goes looking for him. She finds Lee with the man's blood all over his body. Figuring that they're both cannibals, Marin strikes a friendship with Lee and convinces him to take her in the car that he's stealing from his victim. They go to the victim's place, where Lee plays songs by his favorite band, Kiss. Lee goes to wash the blood off his body, and Marin goes to sleep. The next day, Marin and Lee eat at a diner and discuss Oldie. Lee says he's heard of Oldie, but doubts his intentions. A little girl watches on in horror, as the cannibals talk about Oldie and his victims. Lee says that he finds Marin nice, and she feels the same, so they decide to stick to each other. Now they drive to Lee's hometown and enter his house. 
Lee goes to get some food, and Marin explores some of his photographs. Later, the two have a meal, but Lee's sister shows up and scolds him for being a jerk to her, because he never stays in town. Lee promises that he won't abandon her like their dad did, but the sister says she's going to tell their mother about this, realizing that they can't stay here anymore. Lee takes Marin to a slaughterhouse for cattle. They chill and observe the cows, after which, Marin reveals that she's looking for her mom in Minnesota. Lee promises to take Marin to her mom, and then they end up having a smelly workout. Later, the couple goes to a park and discuss their first time eating a human. It turns out that Lee also ate his babysitter, but in the middle of their chat, they come across a couple of cannibals named Redneck and Twisted. Lee is skeptical at first, but he decides to have a beer with the cannibals. At night, Redneck tells some of his human eating stories, but he reveals that Twisted is just a normal human who is voluntarily eating other humans, rather than cannibals like Lee and Marin, who eat humans out of necessity. Redneck also talks about the bones and all eating method, which is what happens when cannibals eat even the bones of their victims. Marin doesn't like Redneck and Twisted, so she runs away to the car, while Redneck mocks Lee for simply acting tough when he's actually very vulnerable. Later, the cannibals fall asleep, so Marin and Lee take this chance to escape in the car. Redneck wakes up and chases after the couple, but he isn't able to catch up to them. Now, Lee and Marin go to a carnival and enjoy themselves with each other. But then Marin starts to feel hungry. Lee finds a flashy man being mean to a kid who's trying to win a prize at his stall. Lee flirts with Flashy for a bit and convinces him to meet up after the carnival for a hormone session. Marin and Lee listen to her dad's last words on the tape, but are disappointed because Marin's dad simply wishes for her to get better and suppress her instincts. Marin asks Lee about his dad, but he says that there's nothing to talk about. Now Flashy shows up, so Lee seduces him and takes his flashy muscles inside a field. Marin goes to check up on them and finds the two men performing a flashy exercise for a bit. However, just before Flashy feels the big release, Lee kills him with his blade and starts eating him, including his Flashy hormones. Marin joins in on the feast, and later, they go to Flashy's house, with Lee driving his own car and Marin driving Flashy's car. They want to get some supplies, but notice that the lights are on in Flashy's house. Marin goes to check out the place, because Lee still has blood all over him. To her dismay, she finds out that Flashy has a family, and it triggers her. She reveals this information to Lee, and he tries to calm her down. They escape immediately to avoid getting caught. On their way, Marin begins to feel guilty about ruining the lives of her victims, and it makes Lee conscious of his own victims, so he tells her not to make this any harder for him. Marin goes to sleep what has a nightmare about her dad spitting blood from his mouth. Later, the couple uses a phone book to find the address to Marin's maternal grandmother. Marin meets her grandmother, but she doesn't even know anything about her. Marin learns that her mom had actually eloped with her dad because the grandmother and her husband didn't agree to their marriage. She also reveals that her mom is no longer with them, but she refuses to give any further information. It turns out that the grandmother had actually adopted Marin's mom, so Marin tries to find out if her mom ever hurt anyone. She becomes defensive, so Marin promises never to bother her again. That's when we learn that her mom is actually alive, but is in another town, where she has admitted herself to a psychiatric hospital. Marin runs towards Lee and gives him the location, so they rush towards the hospital. Once they reach the hospital, Marin tells Lee to stay behind as she enters the hospital. A nurse leads Marin to her mom, but she is shown to have eaten her own hands and isn't able to speak because of her medication. Now, the nurse gives Marin a letter that mom had written for her 15 years ago. The letter reveals that Marin's mom is also a cannibal, and she left dad and Marin because she couldn't guarantee that she wouldn't hurt them. Now, Marin walks up to her mom, hoping for a hug, but mom tries to attack her. The nurse holds down mom while Marin escapes, and then she goes to Lee to reveal everything she's learned. Marin is angry over being abandoned by her mom, so Lee tries to console her using his muscles. Marin angrily scolds Lee to release her frustration, but he tells her that they don't have any other choice but to live like this. Marin remains adamant that she won't end up like her mom, and then she gets into the car. They drive to a gas station, and Marin says she's going to get gas while Lee takes a nap. However, Marin runs away from the car so that she can escape Lee. After Lee wakes up, he looks around for Marin, but is unable to find her without a trace of her cannibal smell. Elsewhere, Marin runs into Oldie, who reveals that he's been following her for around two weeks. Oldie tries to convince Marin to get into his car because he wants to make her his substitute daughter. However, Marin refuses Oldie's request because she doesn't trust him. This makes Oldie angry, and he insults Marin because he dried off next to her, which he considers to be a very personal revelation. Oldie drives away, and then Marin goes to a cafe for some coffee, but notices some cops. So she gets rid of her dad's tape. 
Now, Lee has a nightmare, filled with horrible visions of violence and murder. He doesn't want to live like this anymore, so he calls up his sister and tells her he's coming home. Time passes by, and then Marin comes to Lee's town, looking for him. She finds Lee's sister and asks her about Lee, but she says that he's staying at a nearby lake and reveals that their dad was a drunk who would beat Lee up regularly. One day, things got so bad that Lee ended up fighting his dad while she went to get the cops. Their dad was missing when the cops arrived, so they took Lee in for questioning to test the blood on his body. The blood turned out to be Lee's, so he was let go, but this incident changed Lee's perspective on life. Now, Marin rushes towards the lake and finds Lee, after which she gives him a big hug but without a cannibal kiss. The two decide to drive away with each other. In the middle of their trip, Marin asks Lee about his dad, but he doesn't want to talk about it. Eventually, he reveals that his dad was also a cannibal and had tried to eat him during the time his sister went to call the cops. Lee explains that he had put his dad in a chokehold, causing him to pass out. Then, he took his dad to a cabin, where he tied him up with duct tape. Lee finally reveals that he ended up eating his own dad, and it makes him emotional. Marin tells him she loves him, and finally they kiss each other. Now Marin and Lee decide to be normal people and live normal lives. Everything seems to be going fine for a while, with Marin even getting a job. However, one day, Marin comes home to find Oldie's bag inside her house. Suddenly, Oldie grabs Marin and forces his dying muscles on top of her. He says that Lee left a while back, so it's just the two of them for now. Marin tells him that she is dating Lee, but Oldie says he doesn't like the fact that Marin knows so much about him. Oldie acts weird and says he wants to be with someone who understands him. Luckily, Lee shows up and slowly walks up to Oldie. He suffocates Oldie with a plastic bag, and then Marin takes Oldie's knife to stab him multiple times. After a brief struggle, the two drag Oldie to the tub, and Marin kills Oldie by ripping out his organs. Unfortunately, Marin finds out that Oldie ate Lee's sister because she sees her hair as part of Oldie's giant braid. To make matters worse, Oldie had also stabbed Lee in the lungs, so he is about to die. Marin wants to take Lee to the hospital, but he wants her to eat him completely, like the bones in all method that Redneck had told him about earlier. In a painful sequence, Marin eats Lee completely, and then she cleans the scene of the crime. The movie ends with a shot of Lee and Marin in a peaceful setting. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.